Hi guys! Welcome to episode 13, lucky 13, of 24 of Dixon Drawing Class. So yay! Good news! We are over halfway through. Have you looked at the old drawings in your sketchbook and looked at the drawings that you've done since you started doing that class, this class, and noticed a big improvement? I hope so. There better be an improvement since you've been practicing an hour every day, right? 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 You've been practicing, right? Anyway. Well, we've been through a lot of things. We've been through breaking things up into simple shapes. We've been through drawing hands and face and feet and the figure, which is hugely important. And now we're getting into drawing animals. We're going to be doing three parts of drawing animals. There are so many out animals out there that we could be drawing like a billion different animals. We could be spending, you know, the rest of our lives drawing animals. We don't have time for that. So we are just going to be spending three classes drawing animals. This is the first of this lecture and we're going to be talking today about how to uh, break animals into simple shapes and it's going to be easier than you think because you've already learned it and we'll talk about that in just a second. But now it is time for the lecture. Let's go. Alright so if you take a look at what I've brought up here I found this image on Pinterest and I think it's actually a very good image to look at. If you notice this is a breakdown of a dog here this is a breakdown of a human kind of in a dog uh, position and the reason I put these side by side is because the human breakdown is actually not that much different than an animal breakdown okay so we talked about drawing a circle for the lungs right we have a circle for the lungs here circle for the lungs right circle for the lungs we have the spine right Animals have a spine too. Head, head, hips, hips. Okay, and even the breakdown of the uh, legs and arms is a lot the same, okay? So they have knees. Their knees are up here, and then their ankles are down here. And what you notice is a lot of animals are actually walking on their toes. All right, so this is their heel here, their ankle and their heel their knee again okay humans elbow oh sorry not their knee their elbow is up here their wrist up here fingertips here okay I know this sounds a little bit weird but it's true that is the breakdown of animals the only difference is toes the only difference is the proportions really Okay, so once you learn the proportions, you can pretty much draw any animal, and you've got it down. So what I brought up here is I have a picture of a dog skeleton. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so you can see we have the lungs here, hips here, right? Spine here, spine actually goes down into the tail. I should say, yeah, motion like that. That's the actual spine. You have the head, jawbone, shoulder here, knee, heel, or ankle, and here's the fingertips, here's the toes, ankle here, knee here, hips here. Okay, so the proportions are different than humans, but the breakdown is the same. Let's look at this animal. Hey, we know this animal. It's a horse, I think. If you take a look, we have the chest, and actually, we're going to be looking at skeleton. They actually have a, a larger chest like that, but here's our breakdown. Here's kind of the, the spine going right there. Hips. The hip there, knee here, heel here, toes here. Okay, same dealio here. All right, ankle, toes, head, the breakdown, ears are up here. 
Okay, we'll just connect those. All right, look at that. Here's the skeleton that's kind of confirming it. Skeleton and muscle structure on animals are actually a really good thing to look up. So as you're doing this, be sure to take a look. Like I said, look at how long that rib cage is. Woo! It's a long one. The hip, knee, heel. Oh, sorry, heel. No, that's right. We have the toes here. Heel, knees, hip, etc., etc., etc. Okay. How about this animal? Hey, you know this animal. It's kind of funny shaped. Elephants remind me of a giant bag. Elephants are just baggy. All right. Elephants are also kind of interesting because they're they're uh we have their hip and they actually have knees kind of like humans, right? They bend forward. And then we have the heel and the toes down here. So in a way, shoulder elbows here. They're a lot like humans that way, which kind of makes them more interesting. We have the heel, the toes, and it actually does look like toes, doesn't it? We have the head. Okay, so when we actually pull up a picture of an elephant, head, kind of the jaw, like this, chest, hips. They have quite a belly, don't they? All right, knees go like this, toes, heel and toes. Knees, elbows, heel, heel, elbows. Oh, sorry, not heel, wrist. Okay. Even birds have this breakdown. All right, we have the head. We have the chest. And this is their sternum, their breastbone. All right, and it's, it's a lot larger. But they even have arms. Okay, we have the shoulder elbow, wrist, and this is basically their hand. Interesting, right? Here we go. Here's their hips. Just little hips. We have the knee, the heel, the toes. Okay. So basically, once you figure that out, you can draw any animal that you want, basically. You just need to figure out what proportions there are. And so that's actually your homework this weekend, is to draw a bunch of different animals, break them down into different shapes, and then flesh them out, kind of like what we did here. Okay, so get your Pinterest all polished up and gather all those pictures and just draw every variety of animal that you can think of and break them down into that simple shape, right? Head, chest, hips, shoulder, knee, or shoulder, elbow, etc, etc, okay? That is in fact what we are going to do today for our drawing classes. We're going to draw a wolf and we're going to break it down into simple shapes, okay? And then we are going to flesh it out. It's going to be lots of fun. Let's get started. Here's our wolf. Can you see it? This is done by, uh, I believe this is Balto, and Ben Caldwell did the character design for it, and he is super good. His designs are really, really appealing. We're going to take the basic breakdown, and we're going to get the form, and then we are going to customize it to however you want to customize it. So let's get started. Okay, so as you can see here, I have the drawing sheet pulled up. You can also print it off from my website, the link which I have included below, or you can just follow along. As you can see, we've broken it, we've broken, broken, broke, broke, we've broken it down into simple shapes. Okay, so let's take a quick look at this. So you can see the chest is this big, head is this big, third biggest circle is the hips. We kind of have the spine around there. So let's begin with the largest circle which is the chest. All right, now if you take a look at your paper, at your sheet of paper, you probably want it horizontal. I'm going to turn this horizontal, okay? Maybe you want to do that with your paper too. 
You want to draw it about this big on your paper, not too big or else you won't have room for the head. Okay, and it is not a circle, it is an oval. And it's pretty much a horizontal oval, there is no tilt to it. Remember to draw lightly. Okay, I think we are pretty close. I might be drawing this a little bit too tall. I'll kind of erase that away. Okay, once you feel like your oval is in a good place, let's draw the head. All right, the top part of the head, not the jaw. If you look at it, if you measure it, it looks like it's actually almost as big as what we've got in the circle here. Now, wolf's heads are not actually that big, but because this is a cartoon and we're wanting to make it make the character look more innocent and appealing and fun, the head is uh, considerably bigger than in real life. So what might help is to kind of just lightly draw a circle in the center of this, then bring it up. Looks like it's about this far away. It's just diagonal from here. Okay? So we're going to draw this circle here. Okay, now take a look between here and here. Do they look close? I think my circle might be, just be a little bit too big, so I'm going to bring it down. Okay, this looks pretty close to me. You can measure it. If you're happy with that circle, I want you to make a bullseye in the center, and this will help us later on as we're working on the features. Make sure that each of these portions are exactly the same size. Okay, just lightly draw that in. Moving on, let's do the hips. Now look at those hips. They are exactly as far away as the head was from this main circle, so that's something to think about. It looks like it is almost exactly on the same plane, so you just move over. But it does look smaller than this guy. All right, so if you measured this, you'd say, okay. If we measured out from here, it would be about this big. If we measured out from here, it would be about this big. Okay. So it is smaller and it's smaller than the head too. So make sure that you are making it smaller than the head. But not too small. You don't want a tiny bum on your dog. Or on your wolf. Okay, I might have drawn it a little bit too far out. I'm going to bring it in just a little bit. Okay. You feeling happy with that? You ready to move on? Because we are going to move on. Let's draw the spine. And when I say the spine, I mean the top of the neck here, just to get the portion down. The spine goes about here. The actual spine kind of comes in like this but we're just getting the back here. All right, looks like it just slopes on down nicely like that. Okay. It's looking pretty swanky already. 
Let's get the legs down. Now, legs on animals are really tricky because there's four of them, it's complex, you're not quite sure where they bend. That's why it's so important to learn where the joints are because once you know where the joints are, it's basically just fleshing them out, okay? So let's do these front legs first. If you notice, we have this knee right here, or I should say this elbow right here right in the center of this giant of this of this oval it's pretty small i would say hmm, yeah do a lot of measuring i'd say probably four of these could fit inside this circle so if you want to go one two three four and kind of measure it that way you can okay so this is our knee, almost exactly below it. And this might be a little bit tricky to measure out, so let's actually draw a line for where this bottom foot would be. So let's measure from here and go up. Okay, so what I would do is up here, measure from here, go down like this, mark the bottom here. Okay, once again, just measuring from here, looking up and saying, okay, it goes this far above the neck. So go down here, say, okay, it goes this far above the neck, bring it down here. Okay, and that's how we mark that. All right, so almost exactly below, and just a little bit up from this bottom line, is the ankle here. And I would say it looks like it's about right here, all right, much smaller. Than what we had at the elbow. Go ahead and connect those with a line. Okay, and let's draw this square, which will be basically his toes. Looks like it goes just in front of that, like this. Goes like that. There we go. Okay, looks like the square is almost the size of the elbow circle. I should say, not his toes, his fingers just a little bit longer. Okay, so keep that in mind. You can go ahead, draw that diagonal line leading into it. All right, let's get this leg behind there. Now it's up higher because it's, a, it's on a plane. Kind of goes like that. So we're seeing it in perspective, so it would be higher. Looks like this foot starts about right here. It's a little bit smaller than this square. Because once again, it's in perspective, so because it's a little bit further distance away, it would be smaller. So go ahead and draw that, just a little bit smaller than this square, just to the right of this circle. Let's get that wrist down right here. Okay, looks like it disappears behind the circle, but it leads up to the corner of the circle. So go ahead and draw this line here and do that diagonal. Looks like because it is tucked behind here, this line's gonna go right almost into the center of this square here. Okay, so that's the outline of the front legs. Let's do the back legs. Okay, let's take a look. Let's do this front one first. See how big this circle is? It's bigger than the elbow, but much smaller than the hip. See how close it is to the hip? Measure that. Let's mark it. It goes at a diagonal here. Right. Do it a little bit bigger than what we've got here. Good. I think this is a good start. Okay. Starting from here. Okay, you can go ahead and draw that line. Now let's get the heel down or the ankle down. And this one's out even further. So if we draw a line from here, it goes out about this far. Look, this is a little bit higher than this one. So let's mark this bottom heel. 
okay? And it looks like halfway between the bottom and halfway between this is where we'll find the ankle. And it's out like this. Just draw a tiny add a boy or add a girl. All right, let's connect it with a line and then almost parallel to the page. So straight up and down, we've got this. And then time for the square. It looks like it's about as big as this square. And it looks like that line goes in the center. So we'll need to move this square over just a little bit. This rectangle, it's more of a rectangle. Okay, so that's our back leg. Let's get the, uh, the back back leg. <laughs> All right, now if you look at it, it is pretty much just this circle, boop, but moved over a little bit. So let's go, whoop, boop. All right, moved over a little bit. It's a little bit lower, but not a whole lot, but they are close together. So go ahead and draw that circle. Okay, now if we connect the center of that circle to the hip, it would be the center of this, or just the corner of this circle here. Okay? Looks like this is about, this bottom one is about on the same plane, so let's draw the bottom. Look at how close this heel is to that knee. Maybe it's about, I'm going to say it's about this far away. Let's connect the lines. Okay, and look, this slopes forward like this. This rectangle is just a little bit larger than this one. So maybe keep that in mind as you draw it. There we go. Okay, hey, we got the legs down. Go ahead and pause it if you feel like you're behind at any point. Let's move on to the muzzle, the jaws. Okay, as you can see, I broke this down into rectangles here, but it might just help just to kind of quickly draw an oval like this, just really lightly, just to kind of give it parameter, and then we can do the rectangles. So if you take a look, this rectangle goes about from here, you can mark that, to just below the center line, like here. Okay, and then let's measure how far out it goes. So we'll go like this. It looks like it's almost as large as the head, maybe just a little bit smaller. So you can go ahead and measure your head, pinch it just a little bit, move it over, it goes to here. And it looks like it is an exact straight. There's no tilt to it. Okay, so we've got that. Once you're happy like with that, looks like there is a tilt to this rectangle. So this is basically if this big rectangle had a baby, that's the lower jaw. Alright, it looks like it goes just a little bit past the middle of it. Like this. Okay, so we've got that, we've got a jaw. Okay, this is it, broken down into simple shapes. Let's go into getting the smaller things down, the details and fleshing it out. All right, since we are just doing the form of this, we're not gonna spend a lot of time messing around getting the fur and the eyes and stuff right, but we will spend some time getting the shape of the legs down. All right, we're not even gonna draw the tail yet, and the reason is we're customizing this wolf, and so we need it to, uh, we're probably gonna change the shape of the tail and the shape of the uh, fur around the head and the ears and stuff. So let's just get the form down. All right, uh, since we were working on the jaw, let's stick to the jaw, and if you can see, this slopes on up. He has a smile like this. Okay, so go ahead and draw that sloping up. The nose kind of points out like this. 
Okay, and this is almost pretty much straight right there. Now, if you look, the brow goes off of the circle probably about this much. Okay, so go like that, do a little bump there, bring it in, slope it down like that. Let's get this lower jaw down. Bring this out. Okay, now as you can see, it kind of follows a continuity of this slope. So it's like you drew a line and they connected like that. Okay, oh, this wolf is already looking pretty friendly. Okay. Let's not draw this fur down here let's just smoothly arc it into the chest and the same on top I'm not going to draw any of the fur we're just going to arc it down to the hip if you look because it's stylized we have a little bit of a corner here and it slopes again See how it goes around and then it goes in, then it goes out. Let's do that. Slope around, in, to this point. Okay, let's do that same thing up here. Slope around the knee, kind of goes in like this. Okay, like I said, Muscles kind of go in at the joints, then it goes out. That's what we'll be doing here. So bring that out there. Okay, I'm going to show you just a quick way to draw paws in perspective. Do a half circle. Now the whole circle because the ground squashes them because their weight is pushing their paw down. All right, so draw kind of just a half moon here. All right, and then do some rounded toes like this. Hey, that's easy, right? That's it in perspective. We'll be doing that same thing here on the front, but first let's get this other back leg down. Let's get the tummy down. We have the chest. And we can maybe bring it up a little bit like this. All right, a little bit of a corner here because we have the chest going in and then it caves, right? Because we don't have the rib cage there anymore. All right, let's mark where this one begins. It begins here, it looks like it starts near the knee. Bring it in like this. Go in like that. Okay. Look at this, they're pretty much parallel moving forward. All right, but it does slope in, and once again, we've got kind of that half moon circle thing going on, but flat on the bottom because it's pressed against the ground. And you draw those paws again, but now they are close together because we are seeing it at an angle. Okay, let's do the same thing up front here. Check out that shoulder, man, that is a wide shoulder. It almost goes, it's just a little bit in from our circle here. So let's draw that and bring it in like this. Shoulder kind of is echoed here like that. Okay, and then we have each side of the leg is descending or sorry, not leg, technically the arm, right, is descending into this wrist. So go ahead, have them mostly parallel, but slightly coming together. Okay, we have the joint. Let's pull in for this hand thing. Goes in, dips down like that, and once again, let's do that half moon. Right here. And once again, the rounded paws like that. Okay, the rounded toes. This back leg, look at this. Our wolf is looking pretty darn awesome. 
Let's get this back leg down. All right, both sides of the leg go into the wrist here. Then it kind of curves a little bit like this. All right, go ahead and round it out. Flatten the bottom here, and you'll only be able to see the tops of the paws, or the tops of the fingers or the toes, right? Because it's at an angle, so they're not facing us. All right, let's move up back to the face a little bit, and uh, let's get down the ears and maybe some of the features, and then we'll talk about how to customize it. So check out the ears. They go maybe about this high above it. All right, the triangles for sure, kind of, you know, not perfect triangles. If you take a look at it, because an ear folds around, or animal ears kind of fold around, we have this rounded kind of teardrop shape, and then a straight here, okay? And then because it's facing the other way, on this one we're just gonna get the half of the teardrop shape. Okay, let's at least mark where the eye is. It would be so close. Look at how close it is to the front here. We have the brow here, which we will probably change as we customize. And one way they show that he has fluff around his uh, cheeks is that they kind of draw it out like this, and then they draw it again like this. Okay. All right, a little bit of fluff. Now, Balto is kind of a, a scruffy dog. You may decide to change that as you move forward to customizing him. Go ahead and you can erase all the circles and stuff that you made. This is our wolf form, all right? Know what time it is? It is time to customize this. Let's talk a little bit about customizing it. Okay, so if you are a girl and you have long, shiny, gorgeous hair, you probably don't want to do anything like this because that'll make you look maybe not as well groomed as you would like. So something that you can do is definitely make it fluffy, right? And you can still show that there's fur, but you just keep it pretty tamed down like that. And you can do that on the top side too. It's just like this. Okay, kind of do a fringe like that. And you can even bring it around like that. Okay. And then you want to echo that exact same thing in the tail. So make it nice and fluffy. All right, but still well groomed. All right, make sure that you make your lashes nice and thick. And I would even make the nose a little bit smaller because once again, smaller nose and bigger eyes, that kind of is more girl features. All right, if you are a boy and maybe you'll have shorter hair, want to echo kind of the movement of that hair. Let's say that you have spiky short hair, okay? So what you'd want to do is do spiky short hair here, like that. And then you want to do spiky short hair also on the chest here. Okay? And then you also want to do kind of spiky short hair in the tail too. Alright, I wouldn't make the I wouldn't make the tail very fluffy. All right, that's kind of more girly. Okay, and you can also do this kind of copy that spiky short hair thing, you know, on the on the heels, on the ankles, and there, and you can get it right here. All right, and then depending on how your eyes are shaped, you want to change that too. And then you can do, you know, markings that that maybe work for you. So if you have spiky hair and it's dark, 
You could make this part dark and then lighten it up a little bit. Right? If you have glasses, you could probably do markings like this. All right. We have spiky short hair. Remember to echo that here. So there's a lot of things that you can do to customize it. It's a lot of fun. So, so why don't we try customizing ours right now? <laughs> tell who I drew yeah this is supposed to be Batman this is a Batman wolf I'll let you decide on how successful that was Batman wolf how did your guys' turn out did you do it yourself did you do another character I'd love to see it you should email it to me sometime or something all right that is our drawing our custom wolf and so now it is time for the question and answer portion of our show <laughs> Okay, so this question is one that I've been asked before, and it is, what are some good books to learn for animal drawing? Very timely, right? So we're going to talk about good books for animal drawing. I would say the two that you most definitely need to get is The Art of Animal Drawing by Ken Holtgren, and this one is really great. He was an old Disney artist. There's a lot of different types of animals in this. Lots of time spent on horses, but also we have elephants and lions and cats and deer, and I think there's like even ostriches and kangaroos and stuff. So gorillas, things like that. It breaks them down, shows them in different positions. That's a really good thing. Uh, the other essential one that you should probably get is Animals in Motion. It's a Moybridge thing uh, early in the 19th century. A guy took a camera and he took slow motion pictures of animals just moving. And in fact, if you look behind me at the wall back there, I have a Moybridge print hanging on my wall. All right. And as you can see, it's just animals doing different things, different animals in different positions. A lot of them were horses, but we also have elephants, we have donkeys. We have camels, we have tigers pacing in their cages. This is a really good one to get and study because it's real animals doing different things uh, in all sorts of positions. It's really great, especially if you want to go into animation. A couple of other good ones. Animal Anatomy for Artists. This one breaks animals down into skeletons and muscles. And look, as you can see, this is the top picture of a cow. You never thought you would need to use that, but they have that. Okay, we have bears, things like that. Shows the muscles. This is a really good one to study as well. One that you might actually connect to a little bit better. Fantasy Cartooning by Ben Caldwell. Like I said, he was the one who designed Balto. And so they have lots of different creatures in this one. Let me see if I can pull it up. Yeah, as you can see, he has a wolf. You can kind of tell. In that picture, you can kind of see our wolf that was in there. And, uh, you know, serpents and stuff. So this is good if you want to draw fantasy characters or animals and break them down into simple shapes. It's a lot of fun. So those are a few that I recommend. You can also look them up online. Lots of times on Pinterest and stuff, they have pictures of those animals in just like the, the pages from the book online. So that's something to look at. Anyways, those are great to study. Okay, your homework this week. What you're going to be spending an hour on every day drawing is you want to draw animals, gather a whole bunch of pictures of animals, and practice drawing them in simple shapes, breaking them into head, hips, chest, and then uh, shoulders, elbows, uh, wrists, all that. Okay? Awesome! Great job today. I hope you guys have a good week and that you practice really hard. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.